49ers 23, Tampa Bay 20. I just left the 49ers locker room as the team loads the buses so they can fly back to the Bay Area after a huge win. So 49ers locker room intel for you. I think that the most pressing question on people's minds might be, although there are a lot of things to talk about, but it might be, how did Baker Mayfield get away from Nick Bosa on that fourth and seven where he kind of stiff-armed Nick Bosa? So I talked to Nick in the locker room and he said he was afraid of getting a horse collar penalty. So he's in between a rock and a hard place because Baker puts on a superhuman stiff arm. So you have to give Baker some credit. But as Bosa's reaching for him, he doesn't want to pull down because if he pulls down, the rest would have thrown the flag and that would have obviously extended the game. Now you have to give Mayfield credit for completing a pass while Bosa had his arms wrapped around and while he was stiff arming Nick Bosa. So sometimes you just have to tip your cap. That was an epic play from Baker Mayfield and what honestly was an epic game here in Tampa where it's cooled off because we're finally in the shade. I'm walking where the 49ers sideline was. Uh, they've now cleaned up all the benches. They're doing a good job here at Raven James Stadium. Mayfield and Brock Purdy were going blow for blow. Now, Baker Mayfield wasn't very good for most of the game. He ended up with only 116 yards, four yards an attempt, which is very inefficient, but he did enter that, that supernatural state toward the end, and the 49ers really, really had to sweat to make this game a victory. 23-20 when Jake Moody drilled that field goal. Other people probably wondering about the Debo Samuel Tabor Pepper shoving situation on the sideline. It was Debo shoving Tabor Pepper, then Pepper, then Pepper trying to come back at him. Uh, it seemed that Debo Samuel said something to Jake Moody after Moody missed his third kick of the day. And then Pepper was trying to stand up for his kicker. Pepper and Samuel in the locker room both said that this was a situation where emotions obviously got heated following the miss. Pepper wanted to stand up for his kicker who had missed several weeks. Jake Moody was coming off of a high ankle sprain and Debo Samuel said that he let his emotions in that moment get the best of him. They hadn't spoken yet, Pepper and Debo Samuel, at the time that we were in the locker room, but there was a lot of chaos after the game, and I'm sure that they're going to speak at some point, maybe even right now, right, as they're getting on the bus headed to the airport. So uh, Trent Williams in the locker room said that he didn't even know what had happened. Uh, obviously, sidelines are, are chaotic places during games, so... I do find that to be believable. I think the 49ers were focused on other things at the time, and that was regrouping so they could win the football game. There, are, you know, Some of the talk on the Internet, again, is downright idiotic, saying that the 49ers struggled against Tampa Bay, therefore they aren't contenders. Guess who struggled even more to beat Tampa Bay just six days ago? The two-time defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. It took the Chiefs overtime at home to beat this same Buccaneers team. 49ers didn't quite need overtime here, despite the fact that their special teams, I mean, it was bad today. Let's, let's call a spade a spade. We can say that the 49ers offense and defense combined are good enough to push for a title, but if they continue struggling on special teams the way that they have struggled at very crucial junctures of this year, it's gonna be really, really hard to win. Today they spotted probably I would say you could say three field goals, right, uh, that, that Jake Moody missed, plus the uh, kick return or, or, or the, 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 punt, the punt return that was muffed. That's nine plus seven, 16 points. The 49ers spotted the Bucks 16 points. I think that you could very easily argue, like, if that's a more conservative total that you want to put to it, you could say 14 or 15 points because they got some back with special teams, right, when Jacob Cowing – delivered that 31-yard uh, return. So say that they lost about 14 points on special teams. If you add that to the actual margin of victory, then that was three points, and the 49ers win this game by about 17, which is right along with what my prediction was. I had 31-13, so that's an 18-point win. I think that the 49ers are consistent and good enough on offense and defense, and even defense, which has not been quite as good as as the offense this year, I think they're good enough in those two phases of the game to get the job done. But special teams can't go along ruining football games. It was huge that Jake Moody delivered to win the game from 44. He mentioned in the locker room today that the winning kick came from the same exact 
spot on the hash and maybe even distance as one of his missed kicks. So he was able to make amends and make an adjustment for one of the kicks that obviously did not hit the target for the 49ers. Moody has missed time. Any player who misses time is probably going to have a little bit of rust when he comes back. A lot of times when a kicker screws things up the way that Moody did in his three misses today, he doesn't have a chance at least that week to make amends. He did have a chance to make amends in this game, and I do think that is significant because that could be something that Moody parlays into confidence next week. He was kicking the ball well before he suffered the high ankle sprain. So it's one of those where maybe Jake Moody was fortunate to get the entire cycle of events, the bad and then the redemption out of the way in a win for the 49ers. You know, it would have been really, really bad if had he missed three kicks and then the 49ers didn't have a chance to win there at the very end. And then we'd be talking about this all week ahead of the November 17th game against the Seahawks. But perhaps the 49ers and their kicker have been able to course correct in that regard over the course of this game. Locker room was extremely happy for Ricky Pearsall. Just 71 days after he was shot in the chest in downtown San Francisco, Ricky Pearsall scored his first career touchdown. Trent Williams said it was a full circle moment watching Ricky cross that goal line. Remember, Trent Williams had a very life-threatening experience as well. He had cancer on, on, on his head. M made him miss a full season there before Washington traded him to the 49ers. So Trent Williams, uh, I think, is a good person to talk to regarding perspective and the gravity of such situations. He was just beaming, talking about Ricky Pearsall scoring his first touchdown. The most spectacular two plays in this game, I think, were delivered by the 49ers offense. First was the Christian McCaffrey pattern to the right side where Brock Purdy just put up a beautiful rainbow throw. I talked to Christian about it in the locker room and Christian said just an insane throw from Brock Purdy. But also, I mean, you have to give McCaffrey credit. He's an elite player. To be able to turn around, locate that football and make the catch with a full helmet on, with pads on. I mean, Christian McCaffrey is sensational. So is Brock Purdy. The only way that that particular connection happens for the 49ers is if you have elite talent on both ends. Just a few plays later, the 49ers made another insane connection. And I, I talked to George Kittle about it. This was Kittle's touchdown in the corner of the end zone. That was after Purdy had scrambled. Kittle said that his only job on the play was to clear the safety so that Christian McCaffrey could score a touchdown. Well... McCaffrey obviously didn't score, still wasn't open for Brock Purdy, so he had to run a little bit. And then he went to one of his later reads on the play in George Kittle. It reminded me of 2022, McCaffrey's first game starting for the 49ers, not, not counting the Kansas City game after he was traded. The game down at SoFi where Jimmy Garoppolo scrambled, was roaming around in the backfield, and he found Christian McCaffrey in the corner of the end zone at SoFi Stadium. This was similar to that as Brock Purdy rolled to his left, flipped his hips, and found George Kittle in the back. But Kittle, I mean, this is a, this might be a career year for George Kittle. I believe that that's six touchdowns already. I'll check the stats after. But he might be on pace for a career high in touchdowns. He scored 11 in that 2022 season. He also scored a touchdown in that, that game I was talking about when Garoppolo went to McCaffrey. Now he's catching those touchdowns from Brock Purdy. And... Just like the CMC connection, Purdy to CMC, this was elite to elite, elite quarterback to elite target. Bottom line is that you just try to win in the NFL. The Bucks took the Chiefs to overtime on Monday Night Football, so this is not an easy team to beat. These guys fight. These guys really, really fight. And Baker Mayfield, I think, embodies that for Tampa Bay. The stiff arm play embodied that. I mean, these guys were going to take it to the death against the 49ers. But San Francisco just had more superstars. Tampa Bay didn't have Godwin. They didn't have Mike Evans. The 49ers, though, I mean, I haven't even talked about Jawan Jennings. He led the team in catches and targets. He's, I mean, he's filling in for Brandon Ayuk in uh, a, a dreamlike kind of way, given the fact that he's not making nearly as much money as Brandon Ayuk. But they've got Jennings. They've got Kittle. They have McCaffrey. They, Debo Samuel today, I mean, we talked about him in a different light, but, but he made some big plays for San Francisco offensively. They've got so much firepower offensively that uh, it, when you pair that with an elite quarterback like Brock Purdy, 
it's really damn hard to stop. And the, again, the only thing that stopped the 49ers from scoring 30 plus today was, was the special teams, the missed kicks from Jake Moody. If he makes those three kicks, then they're over 30 points. If, if they don't muff the, the punt, and I know that was Darrell Luter Jr. getting backed into Jacob Cowing, well, th they don't have issues uh, with, with the offense, I think, in the, in the third quarter there because it was the defense that had to retake the field for the 49ers, so just a failure in complimentary football. This team is really, really close to blowing teams out. Today, the special teams was the missing element. Can they consistently make that unit of the game better? That is the big, big question for the 49ers. Kittle at his locker, by the way, was playing Pirates of the Caribbean music after the game, you know, it's the, it's the Bucks. We've got the pirate ship behind me in the background. So I thought it was fitting. George is a funny guy. He said that he watched Pirates of the Caribbean on, on repeat before the season in anticipation of this week 10 game against the Bucks. Now, I think he was kidding. You could probably tell that, that I'm kidding right now, but, but Kittle did say that, and he was playing that music in the locker room. By the way, Nick Bosa, he was, uh, he had the big sack. We, we talk about the the stiff arm from Baker Mayfield and that play, that obviously went in Mayfield's favor. Uh, but there was one that went in Bosa's favor, the possession before, and uh, he delivered the sack. And a couple of his teammates joined in on a dance, and uh, they had pre-planned that dance. It was choreographed, and uh, I think you guys can guess where, where that dance originated. So that's the report here from the field where George Kittle was playing Pirates of the Caribbean music up until a few minutes ago. Really big win for the 49ers. Give you some intel there from the San Francisco locker room. 23-20, first time they win consecutive games this season. Ricky Pearsall, 71 days after getting shot, scores a touchdown. Brock Purdy is an absolutely elite quarterback. When things were looking hairy, when things were crumbling around him, he stepped up and he delivered together with the 49ers other elite weapons, guys like George Kittle, guys with like Christian McCaffrey to deliver a huge win. They're five and four with the Seahawks coming to Levi's Stadium next. We'll see you back on the West Coast.